Now, we all know that Olsen Towers has some of the best roller coasters, such as The Smiler, The Wicker Man, Galactica, and when it reopens again, Nemesis. But the UK's biggest theme park is home to much more than just their roller coasters. Dark rides, water rides, and a few flat rides, the park has it all. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at six of the best rides at Tolton Towers that are not roller coasters. Before we get on into the video, if you do enjoy watching, then please hit that like button to let me know. And if you are new around here, then please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that notification bell so you don't miss a single thing, because we make plenty of theme park and adventure videos here which you don't want to miss. Ever since the flume closed in 2015, the Congo River Rapids has been one of the only water rides at the park. Now, you don't get extremely wet on the Rapids ride, especially compared to other rapids around the world. However, on a hot summer's day, it's a great way to cool off. For the past few years, the Congo River Rapids have felt a little bit neglected by the park, but it appears that Tolton Towers are now starting to improve this ride by adding in some new scenery and audio this year. At the start of the 2023 season, the park actually tested the waterfalls which are located towards the end of the ride, so hopefully these are turned back on in time for summer. They've been turned off for a few years now, so it would be great to see them make a return permanently. If the weather is on your side, then the Congo River Rapids are definitely worth checking out during your visit to Alton Towers. One of the newest dark rides at Alton Towers is Gangster Granny the Ride, which is based off the book by David Walliams. It's of course located in the world of David Walliams area, and as you can imagine, just like the book, it's more aimed at the younger generation. But no matter what age you are, it is definitely still worth checking this ride out because it has some really cool special effects, theming, scenery, and some very questionable scents too. On this dark ride, you will see the characters from Gangster Granny attempt the greatest heist in the history of the world, stealing the crown jewels. It's a fun little story and a great ride that younger guests will love. The queue line is also really cool too, with plenty of references to Alton Towers itself. So if you have some spare time and fancy an afternoon of stealing the crown jewels, then consider taking a visit to Gangster Granny. Now for this next one, I'm actually going to combine three rides in one, and that's because they're all part of the same group of flat rides, which they call the Retro Squad. Now the Retro Squad was introduced when the park reopened again after the pandemic, and this was to disperse guests out more around the park. So they placed three travelling style flat rides in three different areas of the park. Even though we're no longer in the pandemic, it's now the third year we've had Retro Squad rides at the park, which begs the question, how long are they going to be around for? There's now no longer any need for these travelling style flat rides, and they've now even put their latest edition called Twistertron right next to the returning Spin Jam. The main purpose for the Retro Squad in the first place was to disperse the crowds by putting them in different areas, so putting two next to each other in the X Sector, it just doesn't make much sense to me, uh, and along with that it also takes away the vibe of the X Sector too. What once felt like you were stepping foot in an industrial style government testing facility, now feels like you're stepping foot inside a funfair. It doesn't make much sense, however the rides themselves look quite enjoyable, now I personally don't like these kind of flat rides because they make me feel a little bit sick, but if you're into these fairground style rides then it's definitely worth checking out the three members of the Retro Squad. As I said, new for this year is Twistertron, which has replaced the former ride Enterprise. It doesn't look like a super intense flat ride, so if I was going to try any of the three Retro Squad rides, it would be Twistertron. I would love to know your thoughts about these non-permanent flat rides in the park, so let me know down in the comments below. On to one of my favourite rides in the park now, The Blade. This is currently the oldest operating ride in the park as it opened in 1980, which makes it 43 years old and it's still going strong to this day. As with most pirate ships you encounter plenty of airtime, the cycle is pretty long too and it's generally never too busy so you won't be waiting a large amount of time in the queue. In fact, if you visit midweek outside of the school holidays, then you'll likely be able to just walk straight onto this ride. It's one of my favourite pirate ships and I hope Alton Towers don't get rid of this anytime soon. 
Obviously, being 43 years old, it does make you question if there are any future plans for the Blade, but we'll just have to wait and see. But for now, if you want to receive the biggest dose of weightlessness that you can find across the whole of Alton Towers, then definitely check out this classic pirate ship over in Forbidden Valley. Now this next one isn't just one of the best dark rides at Alton Towers, in my opinion it's one of the best dark rides in the whole of the UK. However it was recently overtaken by number one on this list, which I'll reveal to you shortly. Hex is a fantastic dark ride, which has a queue line and pre-shows located inside the towers themselves. Now the ride itself is not actually inside the towers, however you would never know the difference, as Alton Towers have done a brilliant job of making it look like it is. Hex tells you the story of the Chained Oak Tree, which has been a local legend for hundreds of years. The legend says that the 15th Earl of Shrewsbury was cursed by an old beggar woman to suffer a death in the family every time a branch fell from the old oak tree. So, after a member of his family dies after a storm which makes one of the branches fall, he chains up the oak tree to stop it from happening again. The Earl then brings one of the fallen branches to the towers and stores it in a secret vault behind a bookcase. After being sealed for two centuries, the vault is discovered during renovation work, and during the ride experience, guests will enter the vault where they will encounter that cursed fallen branch. There's two pre-shows before the ride which really builds up the anticipation, and making a real life local legend into an attraction is such a cool idea, and what makes it so unique. This ride is a Vekoma Madhouse, now I won't spoil it if you haven't yet ridden it, however just know it is a very special kind of attraction that will leave your head spinning, but having said that, it is still suitable for younger guests as well. Hex is one of the best dark rides here in the UK, the story is great, the theming is fantastic, and the ride itself is super fun. It's had a bit of downtime recently due to technical issues, uh, for most of the 2022 season uh, it was closed and it opened just at the end of the season, and right now as I'm making this video it's gone down again, so there's a few technical issues with Hex but hopefully it will reopen permanently very very soon. And I really hope it does because it's one of the best and most unique ride experiences in the whole park. Just a quick bonus entry now before we move on to number one on the list. It's currently a closed attraction, but I'm still adding it to this list because it's looking very likely that it'll be returning at some point this year. Nemesis Subterra closed in 2015, and it was a drop tower dark ride which was located in Forbidden Valley. The drop was 20 feet, which is slightly taller than the drop on 13. Not massive, but if you're not expecting it, like with 13, then it will definitely take you by surprise. I won't go through the full story, especially with it more than likely coming back this year. I don't want to spoil any more for you in regards to the experience, because it's much more than just a drop tower. It's a great attraction, and hopefully we hear an announcement soon about its return. Did you ever ride Subterra before it closed in 2015? If so, I'd love to know your thoughts, so let me know down in the comments. At number one, we have the brand new for 2023, The Curse at Alton Manor. This is a spooky themed dark ride which was refurbished and rethemed from Jewel for Haunted House Strikes Back. Jewel was an interactive dark ride where you used laser blasters to hit zombies, but now it's an immersive dark ride experience similar to the likes of Phantom Manor and the Haunted Mansion at the Disney parks. Alton Towers have done an incredible job of bringing a new story to life with very impressive theming and scenery. On this ride you go on a journey through the twists and turns of the cursed manor, which was repossessed under mysterious circumstances. As you go through the queue line, you're told the story of Emily Alton, who was the main character in the ride story. As with Hex, I don't want to ruin too much for you in terms of the ride story and the ride itself, but if you do want to know more about it, then check out my full review, which I'll leave down in the description below. But just know that this is one of, if not the best dark rides currently here in the UK. The theming, story and ride are all incredible, and it's crazy to think that Alton Towers turned a ride that less than a year ago was one of the most run down and neglected attractions into one of, if not the best, so quickly. I really hope Alton Towers keep this up and bring more immersive ride experiences in future. We have Nemesis 2.0 coming next year, and hopefully the new Roller Coaster 2. I'd imagine Alton Towers have big plans for both. 
If you've not had a chance yet to check out the Curse of Tolton Manor, then head on down to Alton Towers when you can and give it a go, because honestly, it's one of the best out there, and you won't be disappointed. So there we have it, six of the best rides at Alton Towers that aren't roller coasters. What's your favourites? And are there any rides that aren't currently at the park that you'd like to see? Let me know down in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then please hit that like button to let me know. I'm almost at 3,000 subscribers now, and I would love to hit that milestone, so please consider hitting that subscribe button too. But that is it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.